So hello everyone and welcome to a trip report. I'm um, talking to do this one a bit differently so it's uh, with commentary in some parts. Um, probably be no commentary in other parts so I might just do the commentary thereafter. But today we are heading to Belgrade, the capital of Serbia. So basically we're flying on Air Serbia from London Heathrow on flight number JU something. I can't quite remember what the flight number was. I'll check it there at some point and update you guys. I'll just chuck it in as text and the editing. We're flying on the Airbus AG20. It was meant to be an Airbus AG19. It got upgraded at some point. I think probably Sunday and Monday must be the busiest days. And tomorrow we'll be flying to Sofia from Belgrade with an ATR72, I think it was. So now we're going to catch the SL7. Uh, so it is due at 9.17, or it's meant to be officially according to the timetable. But that is not going to transpire. So it looks like it's going to be 9.25, which is good to give ourselves some leeway. Uh, we're going to Terminal 4. There's a nice viewing deck there, so make sure to check that out. So at the moment, we're taking the SL7 to the Central Station, the last stop. And from there, I'll probably try to get the Piccadilly line to Terminal 4, because that has the old rolling stock that's being changed next year, in 2025. This might be the last time to take a look at that, but we'll see how it goes. There is the SL7 stop, and here is the car in our way. So, yeah, let's see how this goes. And this is the stop, so I'll update you guys once we're on the bus. Looks like it's going to be busy. Now, also, uh, it is the end of August, or so the end of July and schools have just finished, so the buses are actually running ahead of schedule usually, so it's strange that this one's late because I was on the buses earlier this morning and they were constantly like, we are waiting for a driver to, uh, sorry, the driver had been told to hold this bus even at the service because obviously there's less traffic, so the buses run quicker even though they still want to do this slowly because the speed limits are 20 miles per hour everywhere which is about 30 kilometers just over and there is always massive traffic uh, sorry, 34 I think it is um, but yeah, there's always like massive It's just like and these roads 20 miles roads are along most of these bus routes Which is quite annoying because they're always going really slowly, but yeah, I was on the bus there this morning to 151 I was 10 minutes ahead of schedule even though you know it was going very slowly, but yeah empty roads So yeah, this is it and now let's wait for the SL7 and then we'll go from there Yeah, it looks like this SL7 was cancelled because it was showing up, the 917 one was showing up as coming at 25 past and now it's saying uh, 21 minutes, which is a 32 past. So it looks like I just came here early needlessly. Well, this is the second time now in two days in a row where it's a no show from a bus, which is strange because the SL7s this morning were running well ahead of schedule. Um, but there you go. I guess some people have said that about like all these. Um, we got the services that you can be ahead of schedule, but then there'll be some road work. So, yeah, wait that stop for five minutes, and then afterwards, you'll just end up losing all that time because there'll be some delay, which does happen. So, yeah, uh, as you saw there, uh, I'm not sure you can guys see me from that bus engine uh, diesel. They're meant to change those to electric now with the whole uh, there for, Mayor for London's scheme to have all buses electric by 2030 and lower emissions and all that jazz. But, yeah, we shall wait now in this heat. It's like 20 some degrees. I'm here, Joshua, please. Seven nine seventeen. It says it departed. Um, obviously, did not because that is pure nonsense. Or oh, this is the earlier one, actually. Um, it was just there. For flip sake. Yeah, this one seven minutes scheduled. Uh, 
So I was trying to do some landscape modes, which is obviously not working. Yeah, so 917 did not depart scheduled, so as you can see here. Uh, it's a no-show, lovely, more ghost buses, uh, just terrific, um, but yeah, that is wonderful. So we're getting the 932 one. So never mind, that one did show up, it was just late, it was 25 past originally. So yeah, finally it has uh, quietened down on this bus. When you saw it when it got on, it was quite packed. Uh, there was a few free seats, but there's always uh, either people sitting on the outside seat or people just putting their bags on that, and you know, just a hassle having to deal with that. Um, yeah, just the joys of that. I think this was one of those that had trial triaxles. I do wonder who anyone who's like a bus enthusiast, how you actually managed to cope with that in London, because I find the buses here just dreadful. Uh, they're very slow. Oh, you know, it's quite warm. There isn't really much enjoyable things about these buses. They also have them quite nice uh, air conditioned. Um, but yeah, because I was checking, and I was going to try to take the Elizabeth Line or the Tube, but it works out as the same amount of time. I'm supposed to have one from like the likes of Croydon. So you might as well just stick with this. At least you know you're going to get the heat, you don't have to change none of that hassle. Um, but yeah, now at least finally, we'll read a bit. There's a nice breeze here from the window, it's actually not too bad. Uh, I'm nice and cool now. It was showing at this 20 degrees. Every day I check my phone, it says it's warmer than yesterday. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate my phone uh, temperature is. Um, but yes, so we're en route now. We just passed Kingston, which is quite nice. This is the halfway point of the SL7, I think, between uh, if you're starting from East Co West Coast, I think the start point is, and then up to Heathrow Airport. So we have another 15 minutes to go. Actually, that's 45. Um, and then we shall be at. Heathrow, although presumably at Heathrow we've got 10 minutes delayed, so we're looking at probably about 10 past 11, so yeah, just under an hour. Uh, and also another cool thing, or interesting thing, is that they have charging points on these buses. Now, these buses seem to be quite old, I have no idea. This is a Gemini 2, I mean, my guess might be a Gemini 1, this is a Gemini 2. Um, so yeah, they're quite old, but they have retrofitted them with uh, ports, obviously, because uh, it's uh, Heathrow Airport service. Uh, if you ask me about retrofitting it with port issue or retrofitting it with uh, air conditioning. But it is strange that for the simple of using old buses, you think for something like this that they're trying to you know, advertise a something revolution, but really the all this is just repainting some buses and denumbering them. And there's nothing there's an infrastructure element to it is you think they actually put in some what should we call it? Your buses make it a bit nicer because basically Tron, I think these are one of the oldest buses in the fleet on this route which is not exactly ideal, uh, but yeah, there you have it. Uh, go Ahead London has a lot of old buses around. They had those, uh, I think one Central 151 is also Go Ahead. Um, but yeah, who knows when they'll replace these, because if they were actually retrofitting them with ports, I think they'd be hanging around a bit longer. I need to try axles on this bus at some point. That would have been nice. But yeah, I will tune out now, and we'll update you once we're at Heathrow Central, where we'll be changing to either the Elizabeth Line or the Tube. Actually, not even operated by. It's not even an Air Serbia plane. It is a jet, get jet Airlines. So yeah, we're on some sort of chartered aircraft, which makes sense because they weren't using H219s. So we didn't have that many H220s uh, because most flights scheduled on this route, along the Belgrade, are H219s, which is kind of strange. I think this is one of the flagship routes, and also the flights are quite expensive for each. So you might as well just use the highest capacity um, planes. Um, but there you go. So it is 18 years old, it's registered in Lithuania and let's see where it's flying from. So it's flying from Belgrade at 10.30, it departed 27 minutes late. Um, now this flight, if you take a look at the history of this 
fly to her on um, JU211. Tends to be late more often than not, as you can see here. Yeah, but we'll see how it goes today. Each row, you can expect there's always delays. Uh, it's just a very busy airport. And let's just take a quick look at the directions. Uh, I usually change around 3 pm, but see which way we're flying out. We have a left seat, so ideally we want the plane that's taking off exactly like this one is. So it's looking good, we'll get some nice views of London. Uh, it looks like they're doing um, westerly departures. Usually it's easterly, 70% uh, time it's. It's westerly and 30% it's easterly, so we're lucky there. there. Um, yeah, let's just hope that this flight is not delayed past three because it's past three when it changed one way, it might also change the direction depending on the wind. So, there you can see um, the departures. So, that is the way we'll be flying over. So, that's the right side of the plane. So, you won't be seeing the SL6 or SL7 from this side, it'll be on the left side. One great thing, well, I guess one of the things that in other London buses are kind of annoying because everyone does what they want. It also means that I can kind of do what I want here and just kind of vlog and no one really bats an eyelid. So, yeah, there's some positives. There's a speed camera. I keep saying I'll tune back in when we're at Heathrow, but I keep not following on that. The next step is Hanford Cross Station and after that it's Heathrow, so there's just two steps left. So yeah, we're closer than top we are, but it is half ten already. So, yep, there is a 777. I think that is Singapore Airlines. So as you can see here, we have some very nice clear skies. Very few clouds out. And we have the right we have the right direction, so things are planning out perfectly. Easterly departure, nice clear skies. We we'll get some stunning views of London and see 5A. So yeah, looking forward to this. This should be good. Um, let's just hope the flight now is on time and then everything the looks will be in order or in the row, however that saying goes. We're near Haddon Cross now, and then it's about to take another 10 minutes from there to Heathrow. I think this is where the Piccadilly line goes. I was gonna say there's many planes in the sky, but now it's all just kind of quietened down. Just some uh, views of the airport and the runway there coming up ahead in the next five minutes.
So folks, here we are at Hicho Central Station and now we are heading to Terminal 4 and so the brightness is very low on my phone, I can barely see what is uh, being filmed but yeah, there's some airplanes now let's find our way to Terminal 4 with the tube, that didn't take too long, that was quicker I than expected, um, we left at 25 past I think it's about quarter two, so about one hour and 20 minutes. It's pretty good. But yeah, it's great when the schools are off, there's less traffic. Now, obviously, there's a lot of traffic there. Uh, when we were around uh, Carshelton, Sutton, uh, Kingston, but before that, everything was quite calm. Oh, that's going back to West Gordon already. So, yeah. I always kind of get paranoid when I leave, have I took and everything, so I do a quick check. I always check the main things, the more important things, you know, the passports, the cameras, the keys. Um, this is not it. Oh no, it is this. It is this way. Uh, so we're going through this apparently. And we'll see. Oh yeah, it's somewhere behind. Yeah, all terminals, we go down these stairs. Nope, that's wrong, so those signs aren't too helpful. So, right. Oh, I think there's a, a door right here. Yeah, yeah, there you go. It's an automatic door. That's uh, barricaded off. Okay, we're going through there. Let's, oh, that's for buses. Mega bus is also a cheaper than others if you ever traveling but they're very infrequent they're like once or twice a day so it's kind of hard oh there you see that's the kind of thing we're talking about sl9 there new bus although i don't know if that one has aircon so terminal via free train transfer four and five right through here and then we go down the stairs yep so down the escalator it's very quiet uh, surprisingly I would have thought that because a teacher obviously would be quite busy. Oh, careful not to fall down the stairs. Escalator being repaired. Actually, I need to point the camera down so you guys can see where we're going. I'm just holding in front of me, hoping for the best. So, two and three, that's not what we want. We want terminal four. So we have to walk a bit. Lovely, so yeah, there's a the Piccadilly line. Uh, the free train transfer, yeah. There we go, so terminals four and five. The uh, train transfer, now we can collect the free train tickets. Or you can use a contact list, I just prefer to have the least interaction with my car with these machines, so we'll just collect the train tickets. So now we just wait. Uh, yeah, so... You're always waiting for people. I might actually check what terminal we are. Just double check while I'm waiting here. Yeah, so um, I ended up standing behind a person who doesn't know how to use the machine and literally is waiting here a year and a half to figure out what they're doing. So we'll just stand behind this one. So here we go. And destination within four which type it in heat rope okay where is this what is it here Hey, this isn't where it is. Um, right, so you keep going straight. I was at the wrong place. We go down up these escalators. Uh, so. This is nice and renovated. Uh, we're back to roasting. 
I always end up traveling with a jacket because you know in the UK and Ireland the weather's always a bit flaky. Um, but the summer's been really good in the UK. Uh, well, well, not since I've arrived. Is that what I mean? <laughs> not the whole summer. Um, so yeah, it is actually roasting again. It was nice and cool on the bus. I want to put the jacket on with all the pockets because I, I prefer to carry stuff on the jacket because you know you put it in the neck. You go put your passport, your keys, all that jazz in there. It's easy to keep track of, you know. So it's pickpockets really, because they're at the front, much harder to do it. Never in pickpocket actually though. Uh, but you never know. I guess that's handy for walking fast. So we'll keep walking. I was kind of giving us about the tourists there, not knowing what they're doing, and then there was I waiting a machine. That wasn't for me. Someone's dropped their water there, but that is their problem. Um I was also trying to think with the SL6 there, or SL. Seven, so SL7. Well, the driver kind just deliberately left late, so that way you'd have to hold up bus stops, which is another something that some people do sometimes. And it's kind of smart to be fair. Okay. So, you know, people just walk very slowly. I don't like to hang about much. So, we'll get to the ticket here. Luckily, our phone's charged, so we have time to... You know, very quiet. Nobody's talking. Everyone's kind of in a solemn mood. Okay. Let's squeeze in here. It generally makes more sense, you know. Walk on the left and walk on the right, as in walk on the side that people drive on. Unfortunately, people don't do that. So, print the ticket. There you go. These are your free transfer tickets, like this. And we're going to number four. Insert that in there. And there we go. So terminals two and three, not what we want. So terminal four is this way, obviously. I think this is the Elizabeth line. Yeah, this is the Elizabeth line. So unfortunately, we won't be going on a Piccadilly line service, but that's okay. At least there'll be air conditioning on the Piccadilly line. You could use the lifts, but they're always packed, so we'll just do it the old-fashioned way. And also this way, kind of in control. Ah, uh, yeah, that's fairly steep, as you can see, guys. Um, what's the about? How many floors is that? It's actually five floors. Each floor is about two and a half metres. I was going to say 20, but it's probably 10. I say each floor is three metres, so you're looking at three by four, 12 metres. Maybe just over because then you have to include the floor in, so I'd say about 15 meters. I don't know what they're talking about, but anyway. Well, this vlog's already ending up at five minutes. Now, I kind of checked yesterday, making sure you guys can hear. I'm always talking close to the microphone, which kind of just means sometimes the stuff you're seeing on the video is nothing, but anyway, I'm nearly there. Let's see, eastbound services, that's not what we want, westbound services. Right here to the right. And there's 10.58 at the moment, surprisingly. Little tour there. Um, but yeah, we'll just get whatever comes next. This platform looks rather old, but I'm not sure if it's been repurposed. But yeah, five coaches. Oh, I need to clean my lens again. Um, yeah, when you end up uh, pulling your phone out sometimes, if your, your finger's gonna touch the lens. At least phone lenses are easy to clean. This is not a train. This is an Elizabeth Line 
service to Heathrow Terminal 4. The next station is Heathrow Terminal 4. For safety reasons, please keep luggage clear of the aisles and doors, including the area behind the driver's door. This train terminates at the next station. Please remember to take all your belongings with you as you leave the train. Please dispose of rubbish in the bins provided at stations. Okay, so um, now we're just gonna exit. Um, let's take a quick look at the map there. So, there's our train, which ticket, and let's get out of here. All right. You got to keep a ticket as well. So, show here and then. I'm going to terminal before this terminal four. Been so I think terminals two or two, whichever one is British Airways. Terminal five as well uh, for Iberia. Oh no, because it wasn't the last day of whatever terminal it is. I think Iberia is now terminal four as well. Oh, I don't know, I can't remember. But yeah, there's a little souvenir. Usually the machine takes them back. Nothing fancy. 
But you never know, there might become collector's items in the future. Especially now as contact lifts can be used on them. Is there just lifts? I prefer to use stairs, but yeah, there's just lifts. Okay, so now let's see if we can see our flight, just to make sure we're on the right track. So, 11.30, we're 13.30, Belgrade, JU, 211, in the right place. Yep. Cool. Okay, so the purchase is just there, so we shall head to the purchase now. And once we go through security, quick update, try to find that viewing deck in Terminal 4. So, we're in zone D, so I presume we can just, all the parts are going that way, yeah, just there, so, we shall head to Belgrade. So, we have true security, and oddly enough, it's quite quiet here, um, I would have thought it would be very busy at but it's summer months, but it's not. So, now we are going to try to find the viewing deck, I'm not sure if there's any signs, so I'm just going to have to Google it. Let's see what gate we're at first, so... Gate info will be at 12.50, which gives us an hour and 10 minutes. So yeah, perfect. We have an hour to observe the plane. Sounds like a plan. So, um, yeah, I'm going to check on Google now, and then we'll walk over to it, and I'll show you how to get there. So, it is near um, gates 15 and 16, so I think it's in between gates 15 and 60. It offers apparently 270 degrees views. This is the observation deck. So, the other terminals have like views from restaurants, kind of stuff you can find in most airports. But specifically, we're looking here because on Terminal 4, they have a specific observation deck. Now, let's see if it is what it's typed up to be. Although, I actually haven't ever heard anyone talk about it, it's just more based off the internet. You can see some views there from Costa. So, it's about a five minute walk according to this. So, you see there, security is just there to my right. So literally, once you go to security, you go straight up and you follow the signs to get 15 and 16. And you're fairly central, so once you find out the gate info, you can always move. Uh, you can always like get to your gate easily, I presume. Our flight's at 13 30, gate info's at 12.50, because I think the flight's half an hour delayed. So we're probably looking at the departure of 14. Although if we miss the slot, actually I know in the if you miss your slot, it can be quite hard to get back on track, so it could be even later. There's some currency exchanges, I'm just thinking about exchanging some money for Serbia. I'll probably do it in Nikola Tesla Airport, I presume the rate there will be better. So yeah, we have some on the Revolut there, but... I don't know how much cart they will accept. Uh, like, as in, I don't think everyone will take cart. Okay. Yeah, so actually, let's change. So there's no flights. There's only one flight now at 12.55, and after that, ours is the next flight. At the moment, it's 12.45. That explains why it's so empty. So, for some reason, here in Terminal 4, there are not that many flights at this hour, which is strange. But it was a huge massive airport, shared terminals, I think. One, two, and three, the busiest, and then five. I think this is probably the least busiest terminal. Um, I'll take a look quickly what airlines stop here. Yeah, so these are like, I think that's KLM, Singaporean, the Romanian National Airline. I don't know what the name of that one was. Uh, there's a Blue Air, and I think that's the low cost version. But yeah, you guys can probably figure that out if you want. View Heatro, yeah, so you see there. Uh, just on the sign, get 11 to 19, you also have binoculars, view Heatro. That's where we're headed. I'm going to spend about 45 minutes there. Oh, there's a Delta 767 just took off there. Quick views here. So as you can see here, there is runway... You can actually see them from here, 27 hours just at the left. You have 27 R, no, 27 hours at the right, sorry. It was the one in front. I think it's then 9 R on that side. And then you can see there is 787 on the other side. That would be 27 R over there and 9 L over there. But as I said, there are easterly departures, which is 30% of the time, and westerly approaches, so over Slough. 
uh, yesterday and the day before and the day before that, they were all coming in the opposite way, rest of the prices. Um, but yeah, I'll do enough. Last time I'm following the heat shoe, there's also wrestling landings, but yeah, there you go. But anyway, we keep walking and get the view. Here's just some thinking stuff like that, which actually gives me an idea. I shall do the same. So, I'm going to pause this for a second. And once I get my selfie, I'll get back to the business with this video. So, yep, yeah, we're back. There is a Virgin Atlantic 787 being taxied. I'm not sure if that's the one that just landed there on runway 9L. We'll be very quick to get here. Probably not, probably a different one. But anyway, we shall continue forward. And we have lovely clear skies today. Uh, so it's this way, just up here. So, which is perfect. Um, you know, what more could you want? I'm not sure there's going to be any people here, hopefully not. It would make my life easier. Um, these things do tend to be busy though, as you can imagine. Um, so keep going up. Oh, there's not it. Well, <laughs> keep going up. A few flights of stairs. And there's no one here. Lovely. That is terrific. It's all to ourselves. We go outside. That would be a bit too much, I think. But yeah, folks, quite an echo. This is it. This is the observation deck in Terminal 4. We have Rwanda Air, an Airbus A330-300 over there. There is a Singaporean Airlines A380, a Virgin Atlantic 787. And there is the runway. Yeah, I don't think you can walk on this, but this is pretty cool. Pretty cool little feature. There's a sunroof. It's 270 degrees, as you can see here, because you can't see out that way, which is west, but there isn't much there. There's the runway. You can see everything. I think we're going to witness now British Airways 787 takeoff. And at the same time, you can see there, there's an aircraft landing with your flight radar. That's quite handy. This is pretty cool. Definitely, definitely recommend checking this out. But now, let's keep around this. Yeah, Find a plane enthusiast. This is as good as it gets for an airport. And we'll see what's in that door. There's a door there that's tempting me, but I'll stop talking now. This will be the runway where we take off from. And actually, we're lucky that. Well, actually, when the landings are here, you can also see the planes landing. Now, if someone comes up, I will have to stop talking. Um, what do you think there is? Now, let's see what's in this door. And I'll show you That's just the way to lift, I think. Yeah, that's just the lift. Nothing exciting. There's an Air Canada A350, I think. I'm going to take off my jacket and take refuge here for the next 40 minutes. So we're back, um, someone did pop up at one point, um, so yeah, uh, for like five minutes to the pictures. They comment on how warm it is here, it is like a sauna in here, it's 26 degrees outside, it feels a lot warmer. There's some sort of aircon unit just there, that is blowing cold there, but look, um, we'll survive. I just need to make sure not to miss our flight, so we have another, well, officially 39 minutes, but I'll pop out at half past just to be on the safe side. And I'll do a little 360 here, kind of slowly. Um, and then I'm going to switch to DSLR and get some pictures. There's central London, you can see the shards, all the other buildings. This is really cool, I have to say. Uh, it's a really cool little spot. Um, so, yeah, obviously the only thing is you have to have a flight from this terminal to utilise it. So there is a plane taking off. We'll take a little video of that. And, yeah, so that door goes to the lift. We could take a look there, why not? Curiosity killed the cat, as they say. I just have left my stuff here, taken off my jacket and left that stuff. Uh, so I need to, you know, come back and make sure it's still there when I come back in literally two seconds. Because I'm not really meant to leave stuff unattended in the airport. There goes the... It looks like an Airbus H2. It's just so strange seeing one without winglets. Uh, let's have another moment.
Oh, there's an extra 20 minute taking off after it's not exciting about that. Lift handle and push. I should probably shouldn't go in there. I'll just show you. Literally, that's what it is. It's just a hallway. Oh, there's no exciting in there. Not gonna waste time. There's a right turn, so there's that aircraft that just took off turning right. So presumably it's heading somewhere south. There's a Boeing 777 taking off afterwards, a few white bodies afterwards. So I'm gonna switch to the DSLR and get some shots and I'll keep you guys an update in a few minutes. Probably should check flight radar, see if there's anything interesting coming up. Uh, you can see some park planes there. There's a Qantas A380. I have no idea where that came from. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see them from here anyway. You can see the lineup from here. So we have a 777. Oh, there's an A380. We do want to get that captured. So there's a Singapore and A380 taking off after that 777. So I'm going to try to film that and take a picture at the same time. So yeah, there will be no comment here.
All right, so um, we took some photos there. Um, I realized I, after the first few batches that I kept kind of lifting my middle, uh, not middle finger, so my uh, pinky. So that kind of shook some of the HAD photos annoyingly. So, yeah, because obviously I'm using two hands, one's the DSLR, one's to hold the phone, and I kind of just don't even look at what the phone's recording, just kind of hope for the best by kind of moving it in the same direction as the camera. And, you know, hopefully this will turn out okay, because I guess the camera takes a bit more priority because you can zoom in more, whereas with this, you can't really see that far anyway. And I don't like using digital zoom because it's just not great. So there's a British Airways HG20 taking off, and then there's an Aer Lingus HG20 taking off as well. We'll probably stop after that. Um, the lineup seems to be quieting down. There's a JetBlue HG20 um, taxiing there as well, but apart from that, there doesn't seem to be much more happening. And also it is quite warm in here, so basically because there's a sunroof, as you can see here, that actually causes a lot of heat, which is why it's roasting. Um, one person popped up here at some point, and this really isn't uh, the best place to be wearing jeans in. So this lift is actually very nice and cool in here. It was so saying that this little air con my god, it's actually much cooler in here. This is very nice. Although it smells quite weird in here. And there is an Iceland Air 757, Boeing 757. Not something you see every day. And there it is. I think that one just landed though, because it's obviously not quite aligned to the right one way. I would check flight radar, but just not really bother to be honest.
So, um, that was the Viven Teacher Tower. We have another 13 minutes. Um, so let's get popular up there now. Um, and I think we've got enough content. And also, the aircon just does not work properly there. So nice and cool now. So our gate just came up there. It's gate 19. And look what I have it. It's literally right just there. Um, 10 meters from the observation desk. Deck, as you can see there, there is the Air Serbia baggage yoke. It's kind of strange for a full service island to have one of those bag weighing thingies, but yeah, there you go.
the open. Please leave the help with most traction. Please ensure that all your hand luggage and large electronic devices are stored in the overhead lockers or under the seat in front of you. If you see this in an emergency row, please put the red bags in the overhead lockers only. In case of evacuation, leave your belongings behind. Smoking is strictly forbidden. If your mobile or other electronic devices has a flight mode, please activate it now and use it by long board, otherwise it might be switched off. If you notice that the device is damaged or easily hot, please turn it off immediately and any phone cabin remember. Треба нам ще одно пейсто, де сте дадете максимално за пресек, а контрол летення, че не спустите и да упадемо мотори, пресек за едно 15 до 20 минута максимално. Желем удобен лет и надам се, да е температура у кабини веќ добра. Очакуемо мирен лет. Да, миран лет у 35 стопа, отреки 10700 метра на Албанске весели. Хвала на пашна и я че вам се явите едно пол сата при стрепане у Белград с актуалним именам у Белграду. Добре, слайдък, ли и джерман, ви е кемпен спикинг. Мой нем е Буколава, върхам борт на нашия Airbus 320 сервис в Белград. We need around 5 to 10 minutes more for the luggage that has been uh, provided a little late today. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the air traffic control has issued a takeoff time uh, for us, uh, meaning that we are going to start the engines in around uh, 15 to maximum 20 minutes from now. Um, I hope you will enjoy your stay on board. Thank you very much for being our guest today. We are expecting a smooth cruise. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Thank you. For your own safety, we require your compliance with all government signs and cruise instructions. Now sit back, relax, make yourself comfortable and enjoy the flight. Thank you.
you for it in cooperation with the partner line. There is a possibility that certain segments of our airplane service do not meet the standards we are accustomed to on board their safe aircraft. We wish a pleasant trip and hope to see you again soon on our flight. Thank you.
Okay, good, take your seats for takeoff.
Dami Rozkodal, Váš kapitán. Lebo skôr nás je jezero Palaton, Miče Mosko, početí Svetovne Jozef Lovgrad. Sličemo za jedno 37 minúta. Zrejme vedro 30 stepeni i lak vetera sa severozapada. Želim vam dalje odobam let i hvala na pažnje. Ladies and gentlemen, your captain speaking. We are going to leave our cruise ground due to soon and the remaining flight time to Dublin, 37 minutes. Uh, weather conditions, the sky is clear, temperature 30 degrees centigrade and uh, light uh, northwesterly winds. I wish you a nice remaining stay on board and a very nice uh, day in uh, Serbia. Thank you.
Okay, we could take a seat for landing. Seatbelts. 
All business class and economy comfort are passengers continuing their journey with our company as well as Etihad Guest Coast. Our platinum members have complimentary access to their Serbian Premium Lounge. All other passengers can purchase lounge access to. For more information, visit our website. Thank you. Keep your body pass and receive various benefits in Belgrade and accommodation, cafes, restaurants, transport services and tourist attractions. Find out more about all discounts at our partners on our survey.com keep on web webpage. So here we are in Belgrade, Nikola Tesla Airport with a delay of 1 hour and 10 minutes I always forget that when it's changing time zones that it was actually the old time, so I was like, oh we're on time, so, nope, we're an hour and 10 minutes late and then I was like 10 past 6, I was like, wait a minute, I thought it was 10 past 5 and then you realise, oh yeah, because you're on airplane mode, the time's not going to go updated but yes, we're in Nikola Tesla Airport now, very nice clear skies some great views from London not bad views of Belgrade either on the landing. Um, I think we took the approach I wanted, which was kind of circles around the city. So everything worked out, take off and approach wise, views wise. So, um, you know, gambling on the left side worked out. Sometimes you can end up unlucky, and the views on the other side, depending on takeoff and landing directions. But anyway, now we are going to head to the hotel, which is in Zenu. So we have to take two buses. And I have money on the river, but I probably need to exchange cash somewhere. Um, the airport rates are never that good, but usually they're a bit better once you get out of passport control. And there it is. And a little quick, I guess, uh, opinions of Air Serbia. I don't know, technically it's get jet, but you know, I think they're kind of told what kind of standards to follow. And yeah, um, was there's a control tower. It's quite good, um, you know, it says a snack and they gave us like a full sandwich, which was very good. Well, it's good, even the wipes, uh, obviously that's quite expensive. And still, this works out much cheaper than taking a direct flight um, to Sofia, so it works out well. Now, the city's back that way, and on landing, you will know this will be past Ladina, which is in uh, a game called Omsi, the bus where the, where the 71 goes. It's a nice, cool little feature as well, because that's near the airport. So yeah, I think 
this is where we might leave it. And I shall catch you tomorrow when you go from Belgrade to Sofia. So quick update, we are in a, a zone called Fontana and we are heading now towards Zanum in that way. Um, bit of chaos at the airport, so there was nowhere to buy tickets. Um, the bus driver says to buy a ticket with an SMS. Go to the information desk and to use the, or what you call it, the, um, you know, you can pay with card or cash. Try yourself to get it on, but you're not going to risk it, you don't know. Uh, I've seen other countries like Prague and Sofia, they do get inspectors on the buses, so I was going to risk it. I got some minibus, which was like four quid. He's going to because he dropped me off here in like ten minutes. Uh, and then in the kiosk, look, I was able to buy a day ticket, which is like one year 25 cents, which is mad. It was like 125 Serbian dirham. So now we're going to go across the road and get the 17 bus. Hopefully, it's not too much of a wait. And... Then finally, at least we'll get some, uh, they're not going to let me through. Oh, sorry, thank you. Yeah, so by the way, I think they have to stop at pedestrian crossings here. But yeah, the guy at the kiosk was very nice on the bright side. Uh, you know, he uh, told me all the information. Got some wallet as well. So you can't, you have to use cash to buy a ticket for some reason, but you can use card for everything else. Sure, I don't know. But anyway, let's get to 17 now. And... Hopefully this comes to an end. So actually, it turns out we're in an area that is featured in OMSI 2. We are in, um, near Zenum, there's the 45. That's actually in OMSI 2. It's along the suit in the map, in the Baghdad map. So yeah, that's cool. So we passed some areas featured in OMSI 2, the bus manager. Now, obviously, most of you might not know that. I might put this in a separate video. But uh, what a little coincidence. Oh, I recognise the area from a game. I always like the Baghdad map, and it's nice now to be in the real thing. So, host oh, we're in somewhere up here. Um, seems to be essential enough, like there's shops and all that jazz. Everything's open, right? And it's still like, still on, it's 8 o'clock. But yeah, finally, it seems like we're nearly there.